I'm not going to show you every single step of the reassembly of the intake manifold. However, I will show you a few things that I think are important. Also, I'd like to emphasize that you, you, you should use some systematic way to ensure that you get everything put back together properly. Either use a uh, shop manual or some self-made uh, checklist. I usually clean off the uh, heads with some uh, Scotch-Brite and some solvent to get all the uh, old uh, shellac and so forth off of them. Likewise, I cleaned off the underside of the intake manifold before I replaced the, uh, the intake manifold gasket. When I uh, flipped the manifold back over to reinstall it, I put a towel under it to kind of cushion uh, the blow and then uh, repositioned it a little bit and then extracted the towel. Also, I want to uh, re-emphasize not to reattach the large plastic uh, wire protector box. Don't attach it to the intake manifold until after you've got this thing torqued down. Almost all the bolts you reinstall will have torque values listed in the Toyota manual. You should pay particular attention to the values for the bolts that hold down the intake manifold. I could not find anything in the Toyota manual that was helpful other than to use 13 foot-pounds of torque. However, in the Haynes manual, it said install the manifold and thread the mounting bolts and nuts in place using the following manner. Working from the center outward, tighten the fasteners to 13 foot-pounds in three to four equal steps. Be careful not to over-tighten the bolts that screw into the top of the intake manifold as it is made out of a composite plastic and you can break loose the metal inserts if you use too much force on them. A topic that I do want to stress is the fuel system. Pay particular attention to the reinstallation of the fuel injector nozzles, the fuel delivery pipe, the union bolts, and the guarded fuel line connector in the left rear of the engine. When you're reinstalling the O-rings on these fuel injector nozzles, Make sure that you use some spindle oil or gasoline to lubricate this. Uh, you don't want uh, to damage this O-ring or uh, twist it uh, before you uh, insert it. There is a section in the Toyota manual that, that addresses the reinstallation of the fuel injector nozzles and their O-rings. It's a good idea to take a peek at that. After you have the delivery pipe in place and the hold down nuts are on finger tight, Make sure that all the injectors are seated properly in both the manifold on the bottom and the fuel delivery pipe on top. You can do this by checking the fuel injector nozzles themselves and see if they will turn slightly to the right or the left before you torque them down with these nuts. The fuel delivery pipe unions deserve some special attention. Make sure you have both of the crush gaskets in place before starting to thread the union into the delivery pipe. Because there is often some mild side load on these unions, start them threading by hand and make certain the union is not cross-threading before tightening it down with a socket wrench. These unions will require 29 foot-pounds of torque. Wait until you torque the fuel pipe unions in place before tightening down the retainer clamp on the front fuel tube on top of the intake manifold. I need to make a correction uh, to something that I showed you in chapter one and that is uh, I told you to spread these two flanges and push this guarded uh, connector cage back when you wanted to remove the um, fuel line connector for the rear fuel uh, return line. Since then I have learned better and the proper way to remove this guarded connector is to simply push down on the cage, this orange cage, like so. That will expose a blue button on either side of the connector. And by squeezing on the two blue buttons, you can pull the connector off like this. Likewise, the proper way to reinstall this connector is to simply push it back on until you hear a click and then push up on the orange cage and lock it into position. When I replaced the O-ring on the 
water bypass uh, pipe and also the two gaskets on the rear water bypass joint, I entered the cooling system and there's almost certainly to be uh, air in it. Therefore, you have to bleed the air out of the, the system or the engine will uh, overheat. In order to bleed the air out of the cooling system, there's a very simple little tool called a spill-free funnel. Uh, this comes with a set of adapters that will fit on almost any radiator cap. But basically what you do is you, you slowly fill this uh, uh, funnel up to about a third of the way full and then turn on the engine, let it run until the thermostat opens and you'll watch bubbles come up through the antifreeze and that, and that basically purges it. I learned the hard way that the fuel injector electrical connectors are just too old and brittle to be disconnected. The snap retainer mechanism broke on the very first one I tried to remove and therefore I decided to just leave the connectors attached, which by the way worked out fine. I could not reattach the broken connector to the injector with a tie wrap, so I replaced it with an aftermarket connector. I cut out the old one and soldered in a new one and used some heat shrink on the wires. Don't be alarmed if the engine runs rough after the battery has been disconnected for any length of time. The car's computer loses all of its information about engine idle, but this usually clears up after a few minutes.